Good morning. So we're going to be featuring incredible burgers. And you know what I love? And you know, Jacqueline, um, bringing in the different styles. So I want to ask Jacqueline a direct question. So Jacqueline, in Vietnam, do you see hamburgers and burgers as we traditionally know them here, sold there frequently? Yeah, in Vietnam, people also uh, eat hamburgers or burgers. But to be honest, it's not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> And you've had the opportunity to eat in Canada, so she gets to be a little bit of a subject matter expert for our international guests that are on there that she's had in both countries. Well, we appreciate you sharing the love, and hopefully this week I know the boys will eat very well if you practice some of these recipes. Good morning, Scott. And, and Scott from Gourmet Sauces by Scotch Kitchens joining us today, and um, because you know, a lot of the time burgers here in Atlanta, Canada, we like to spice them up a bit. And there's a lot of people that really like to put a lot of peppers and different spicy things. So um, we're gonna feature several burgers, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about the toppings. And today um, I'm gonna, I've got a couple of sauces that I'm featuring. So let's, let's <coughs> here on this beautiful May 23rd, 2021. Isn't it incredible to think how the year is going by? And I have to say each and every week, we talk about the weeks. Well, apparently I wrote the same week twice in a row in a flip chart at one point. So I did go back. It is formally week 42 and I will keep complete track. <laughs> and um, and it's, an, it's unbelievable to think that now we're gonna be coming up soon on a year. I know when Richard and I are always looking at the themes as they're coming up and, and you know, more and more each week, it's what are we gonna do next? But you know, um, in our journey this week through the markets yesterday, as my mom and I usually do, um, there's a lot of things that are pickled and bottled and different things. So I think next week we're gonna fe fe feature pickling. So pickling and stewing of different types of vegetables and things that are very prominent here in Atlantic Canada. And not only do we do it in the spring or we're eating them through we do it a lot into the fall. So I think it's a great one. There's another, uh, we were talking just before some of you came on out about a wonderful um, vegetable that grows this year. It's called rhubarb. Rosalind has a lot of it growing into her backyard and she has transplanted some into mine. And it mm -hmm. is a wonderful vegetable to pickle or stew. So we're gonna feature some unique recipes. And I'm sure, and I know we've got uh, Maureen on from Liverpool, Nova Scotia today. And um, she knows a lot about rhubarb, I'm sure, in her area. So um, let's talk a little bit about the recipes. So we've got Jacqueline from Vietnam gonna be featuring a bun mi burger sandwich. And I, I can tell you, I've had a lot of people, when I put the picture up, asking about. <laughs> so we're quite excited about your seasoning as we are every week, but I was excited that you did it in a meatball sandwich because that's a great way to do it. Um, we've got Richard from Ireland who's going to be featuring a traditional beef burger with, I think, a few extra treats and I'm sure some cheese and some other things on it. So we're excited to see what he's cooking up and the great toppings that he's going to add to it. And Rosalind um, here in Riverview, we're really excited, has a turkey burger with some beautiful organic turkey. She's going to tell us about that and see all the different toppings that you can go in. I have three burgers that I'm going to be featuring. Uh, the first one is a beef and pork blend, and the second one is done with lentils and spinach. So it is a vegetarian burger. So mm -hmm. very excited with the tex mix <coughs> layer. Very excited about that. And then we've got a pork burger, and either the seasoning that I put in, this is very good with ground chicken, turkey, or pork. It just so happened that yesterday when I was visiting Oliver's down in Hillsboro, he had an unbelievable amount of fresh ground pork that he had done, so I couldn't resist it. So that came home with me from the market, and that's okay. going to be one of the other features of the program. Okay. And um, now I'm going to um, I'm going to also feature uh, Glamorgan sausages from Wales. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah, uh, there's a history on those. They they actually created the first veggie uh, sausages and burgers centuries ago. So. 
So I thought I'd give a little talk on that and I've got it all ready for you as well. Fantastic. I was looking at the beautiful jars and a bun sitting there and uh, Richard had said, and I knew that that veggie department was gonna come around. We love Maureen to be able to be um, always bringing the extra recipe for, um, well, I eat a lot of vegetarian more than I say. And like I said, this lentil burger recipe, I use yep. it in a few different ways. So as yes. we go along, we're gonna talk about toppings and we're gonna get everybody rolling. So one of the things I do wanna remind everybody is to be on mute if you can. If not, it's really important that you're not making noise because as this is recorded, it means the camera is gonna record differently. So, and we want everybody to have an opportunity to go back, watch and listen afterwards, practice these recipes and take a little taste of Atlantic Canada with you in the world. And especially for our students that are joining us today, um, we love the opportunity to have you take some time with us and see what's going on in our kitchens. So I'm gonna start with one of the burgers. I'm gonna walk through my main burger and then actually I'm gonna go over to Rosalind and then we're gonna bounce over to Vietnam, okay? So what I'm gonna do is mix some of the blends of meats we've got going in here too. So the first one that I've got done up, mom, if you can pass me that big bowl. I love this because, and when I say big, I wasn't joking. It's a big bowl. So when I make certain type of burgers, I like to make a lot of them up. And, and I'm gonna show you a really neat kitchen tool that I have. And one of the reasons why I love to do that is um, I can freeze them. And then if I come home, what's going on at the end of the day, I can take out the frozen burgers. And for those Canadian references, I often call them hockey pucks out of the freezer. And they're very easy to thaw out quickly and I can use in the barbecue or whatever. So, and um, I've got some beautiful organic beef and some organic pork that's been mixed in. So you'll see it's a blend, but because I used such good meat and I know that the flavor of the meat is really, really wonderful. Here, I'm gonna trade you this. Um, this is, she's handing me the little wonderful kitchen tool that um, I used to make the burgers. So one of, the, one of the things I used in it was Angela's Herbs de Provence. What I wanted in this was some dried, nice herbs that were gonna go through it, but not overpower the meat, actually highlight that meat a bit. This particular mixture has some dried rosemary, thyme, savory, marjoram, tarragon, and a little bit of lavender. So if you're looking to repeat a bit of that, but one of the main ingredients is the dried rosemary and the dried thyme. I think those are the ones that I would say if you're, you're repeating this one, ensure that those are in there. And um, it really does add a nice, put, I put some salt and pepper, nice fresh cracked salt and fresh cracked pepper in. And then some red, fresh rosemary. So what I did is I took about two sprigs about that size, they were about six inches each. And I diced up the rosemary very finely inside the burger meat as well. What's really important about that is it's gonna draw out a little bit of the dried herb flavor, and it's also gonna give a little bit of that fresh flavor to it. So really that's what's been put into the burger. So there's one other ingredient, and I like to put this in, so there's two eggs. And then I also diced up about eight small white mushrooms into very diced sized pieces, and I put those in. And what I find the mushroom does is it just gives a lightness to the burger. And even if someone doesn't like a mushroom, you probably might not notice it's in there, but it gives a beautiful texture and a lightness to the meat because you can imagine the texture of a mushroom is so light. So those do go into the burger raw because if you like mushrooms as a topping, fried mushrooms is a very popular topping to put on a burger. So this little device, mom, you can bring the other one over. You're probably gonna need two hands for that. This little device is me. This one comes from a long company, company here in Canada, Tupperware. Um, it's made, but if you see, it's a plastic ring. And then it's got a little plunger. Thank you, mom. So it's got that little plunger that goes down in. So what I can do is form a ball of meat, the exact same ounces or whatever size that I want. And I put it into the ring and I give it a compression. And what it does is it really puts that meat into a perfect ring. And I am not 
having to have it uneven. We probably all cook burgers that get uneven on a side. They're not as cooked in the middle, they're crispy on the edge. Those aren't bad either. I'll trade you mom. Thank you very much. But this is what they come out looking like. So can you see that? I know, right, Jacqueline? I'll make sure I have one for you when you arrive. That's a promise. So this is one of the beautiful pork burgers. So I'm gonna try to sit and make sure these aren't gonna slide off because they're on. So this bottom one here is the pork burger and you can see it's light. And what you're gonna see inside of that is a lot more onions and things. But this is the beef burger here that we were just talking about. And it has really just the beef and you can see a little bit of the mushroom in there and probably a little bit of rosemary. So the nice thing is, is when I go to cook those, and we're going to cook one up in a cast iron frying pan here shortly while you are cooking, just to show you how that comes out. But I really want to emphasize the nice part is look at the consistency with the edges. So that burger is going to cook perfectly and evenly. I'm going to use a cast iron frying pan this morning to get one cooked up, but those also are really perfect on the barbecue. I know because of the quality of meat I use that that's going to keep its shape and there's probably not, not as much fat in it. There's a little bit of that like pork, but that should keep its shape. So then the other thing is making sure you get a bun big enough. So that is what is gone into that. So I said the salt, pepper, the dried seasoning, and a little bit of the fresh herb. That's really it because again, I want the meat and then the beautiful toppings that I'm going to put on top of that burger. So we're going to get cooked that up and um, we're going to talk about the toppings when we assemble that burger. So um, is there any questions anybody has? Please put into the question box. We're happy to read. And yes, it's kind of a smash burger or smash me. Yeah, guys, that's maybe what you guys would call that in, in, in the other countries for sure. But it's just fantastic when it all comes together. So Rosalind, why don't you tell us what's gonna be cooking with some of that beautiful organic turkey meat? And I do use some pork. Jacqueline, thank you for asking that question before I go on. I use 75% beef and 25% pork. So depending on the quantity you're choosing to make, that is the ratio that I do use of that blend. And again, it's a really lean, lean, high quality beef. Sometimes you can use a ground sirloin and about a quarter of it, I use the ground pork. It is just as good without the pork. I'm just telling everybody, it really, really is. And then some people here will also cut up bacon and things like that to put on it. So I've seen a lot of people, and I'll end on this one, Roz, before I go over to you, ending on that. So great topping. Often in Canada, we're asked about back bacon or regular bacon. So there you're seeing, so the difference in these, and mom, can you hand me that bowl of it right here? Oh, I see. Thank you for the long arms. I could reach it. So then the bacon cooks up more traditional like this, fantastically. It's been cured. So it's already been, had a processing done that's been done at the butcher. And then the back bacon cooks up like a little slice of ham. So Jack, want to be very similar to those sliced ham and different things that you would use. I plan to put those in some potato salad that somebody named Jacqueline inspired me to make. So I think that that back bacon is a great substitute for the ham in a potato salad. But these ones um, need to be cooked and they're not a cured and it's very lean and there's no fat in them. So there's your small back bacon, or sorry, regular bacon and your back bacon difference in Canada. And I can make you a promise, they will be on a burger later. So Roz, over to you with some turkey talk. Perfect, thanks Michelle. Thanks for joining us everybody. So I'm doing a turkey burger. I pre-mixed the meat last night, so it's, it's firm this morning, so I wouldn't be playing with it. I did add, where turkey's a little bit um, drier, I did add a egg and some spices. So I put, uh, thyme which is Michelle's favorite out of my out of my sun room and I also put some um er, uh, some uh, chives out of my backyard I also put a little bit of garlic salt a little bit of pepper not garlic sorry garlic powder no salt uh, a little bit of black pepper and I do a special mix of uh, cumin and um 
uh, turmeric and a little bit of curry powder. And that I just mix up on a big batch and I just sprinkle that in as well. So you'll see that the turkey looks a little yellow and that's why. So the nice thing about the turmeric, as we know, is uh, very good for you as far as um, inflammation, lots of other things. So what I do at that point, so I'm not, I'm not making a regular burger, I'm making a stuffed burger. So the way I'm gonna stuff my burger is I start with a very small, big, well, big meatball size. So then what I do is I put it, I'm gonna angle me down so I can, you can see what I'm doing. So as you can see, I have a meatball here and I put it between two parchment paper. Then I just squish it down to make it round. And then I take a rolling pin to make it very thin. And then it looks like this. See how round and thin it is? Right? So then I've already done one. So then I have the round, so I have the bottom platter. And then I'm going to put um, mushrooms, onions, a little bit of red pepper. Uh, my son's home for the weekend. Uh, so I'm going to put some hot peppers because he loves hot peppers. I'm going to put some bacon, crispy bacon. It's already pre-cooked, so I don't have to worry about the bacon being not cooked. And then I'm going to add cheddar cheese. There we go. And then I take the top of my burger and I go bada bing, bada boom, done. Take it off. And then what you do is you seal the edges. So when you cook it, it stays complete. So when I put it on the barbecue or in a cast iron frying pan, it needs to be hot frying pan. And you can see that it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, high and thick. Um, let me let me put my camera back up so you're not staring at my counter. So as you can see, it's a different size. So I've made one prior. I didn't think I'd be able to do so. I did, I've made two already. And you can just continue. You can put whatever you want in it. I put uh, those toppings. The next ones I'll probably put maybe some cranberries and some other toppings in because the, the batch makes when you thin out or or um, um, rolling pin flatten out the the meat. It goes quite far as you can see. The, the the burgers themselves are quite large. And out of the batch, I will probably get at least two to three more burgers this way. So what's nice about this is that you can stuff it with anything you like. You can season it any way you want. Uh, then of course you, as Michelle said, you need a bun big enough to fit it or you can eat it. Uh, and then you also can uh, top it with other things. My son for sure will put pickles on it, uh, mustard, mayo, whatever else you want to put as a topping. As Michelle's going to talk to you about topping, so I won't get into details. But everybody has different choices. So the nice thing about it is these burgers cook up deliciously. They're stuffed on the inside. The cheese gets all melted. The, 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 I diced the onions and everything very small. That way they cook evenly with the burger. So it's, it's not very heavy in the middle. Uh, same with the mushrooms. As you can see, they're very small mushrooms. So everything's cut, chopped the same size so they cook evenly as, as we always say. So back to you, Michelle. Any questions first? Yes, Rosalind, please. Um, tell us what buns you're going to be using and what will be the toppings that you choose on yours. It's always about what your toppings are choice. Well, definitely I'm going to grill up some more bacon. I mean, that's just obviously. And I'll probably put some more cheddar cheese on top as well as I have uh, cherry tomatoes. I also like cucumbers on it and pickles and uh, some hot uh, banana peppers for sure. Of course, you got to put a little bit of um, mustard. And my husband would always say you have to put mustard and relish on the bottom and ketchup and mayo on top. So that's just the way the burgers, you have to do that in the Miller house. So that's uh, that's what I do. And of course, once I open my kitchen, once I open up my fridge, I might see something else I wanna put on it and then I'll do that too. So the, the nice thing about burgers is you can put whatever you want on it and whatever's in your fridge, it's kind of like our pantry week. We would just empty out our fridge on top of our burgers. So that's what I do. Fantastic. And tell us what you choose for a bun rise. I just use a, a, a ciabatta bun, the square ciabatta buns. Oh, fantastic. 
Yeah, I like the organic ones that I can get from uh, from the local grocery store here. I didn't get to the baker this this week because I was working in my yard. So, and I did a, a nice six k hike on the Dobson Trail. So, I uh, I uh, ended up doing that instead. So I didn't get to the baker, but I think so, they're going to be delicious either way. Fantastic, because it's one of the things is important. And thank you, Ross. As we talk about our burgers, we want to know what you're choosing to put on your burgers. And please tell us what you might want to put on that burger. So, and then the other thing that's always interesting is the bun choice. And, and I've got a couple here. We're going to talk, I've got a couple of different buns. I'm going to choose some before we go over there, Jacqueline. Um, when we were down at the market, Oliver's Bakery in Hillsborough is a German bakery. Richard, you're going to love it when you come out and visit this region, when you come and visit. It really, really is spectacular. Roslyn has his stuff all the time. So I got my mom a treat. Oops, she's going to have a cheese bun. Can you see the cheese melted and baked already into her bun? So I know those are one of her favorites, so we made sure that mom's getting a cheese bun. And then Rosalind, you're going to get, so on the burger that you're going to have here this afternoon, whichever burger you choose, um, I went, and these are a nine green, um, and they're made with spelt and canute. So they don't have the gluten in it. They're a wheat free. So it's great because there's something that I can have. So you just made them fresh. So they're really soft. So I'm really excited about that as a bun choice, but it's really neat. So, and I'm sure, Jack, I know Jacqueline and Richard have different ones as well. But another choice that I often use is this beautiful bib lettuce that I got from Angela. So, and with my veggie burger, I might choose to use, so if someone didn't want any flour at all, and you get these beautiful, nice pieces of bib lettuce, to use as an actual bun. So there's a, a couple of other bun choices. I know a lot of other people, my mother likes to get these little flat breads or these little non breads and they're just into little squares. And the way I say is you could put more toppings inside when you're not trying to get your mouth around as much bun. So I think that there's something there, but I know Richard's going to tell us a bit of a bun trick. So I'm going to leave that for him. Um, Jacqueline, let's see what's cooking over with you. And then Richard, we're going to get your stuff cooking in your kitchen. And I'm going to give you a screen share, Jacqueline, because, you know, yeah. that's important. And um, every week we're very excited. And, you know, Jack, Jacqueline, I wrote in here, Buy Me by Jack V. That's how I wrote it on the board today. So this is Jacqueline from Vietnam. So we are always excited. Yeah, thank you, Misha. You're welcome. Yeah, um, today I'd like to share with you the recipe of uh, bánh mì, okay, um, the favorite dish in Vietnam, bánh mì with uh, meat bones, uh, something similar to uh, hamburgers. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the ingredients. Uh, I use 600 uh, gram of minced pork. And remember, we we need to use uh, uh, meat with some fat. Don't use lean meat uh, in order to make the meat bones tender. Um, 300 gram of uh, shredded Mexican turnip and um, cornstarch. Yeah, cornstarch. Bread crumbs fried garlic, tomatoes, soy sauce, sesame, uh, sesame oil, and uh, cooking oil, chopped onions, garlic, and uh, spices. We need some salt, sugar, seasoning powder, black pepper, and cilantro. And now, uh, um, some steps uh, to make meatballs. First, we uh, mix the meat with one tablespoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of breadcrumbs, one tablespoon of fried garlic, half a uh, tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, half tablespoon of seasoning powder, one tablespoon of sesame oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce and marinate the meat for 15 minutes. The secret here is uh, we need to have um, uh, bread crumbs 
and me uh, Mexican tonic. And later, I will tell you about this one. Um, Mexican tonic. Mix the shredded Mexican tonic with half a table, okay, teaspoon, just teaspoon of salt and leave it for five minutes. And after that, we have to blend it very well. So as you can see here, uh, the salt make the tonic uh, a lot of a lot of water and we have to drain it very well. This is the secret to make the meat more tender. And after that, uh, we mix the tonic with the meat and then we make the small bones. And after that, we steam the meat bones for 15 minutes. And now how to make the sauce. We use the food processing the processor to blend the tomatoes into paste. And then heat three tablespoons of cooking oil with one tablespoon of coloring oil. Saute some chopped onions and garlic. And after that, we add tomato paste into it. Then we add uh, some salt. I use a uh, half a uh, tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and half a tablespoon of seasoning powder. And after that, we put the meat bones into the sauce. And we cook for five more minutes. And finally, we, uh, we serve the meat bones with baguette. Um, I'm not sure that uh, we can uh, use it with uh, sandwiches or not, uh, but uh, it is very delicious when we eat it with uh, baguette. Um, Jacqueline, you could do that either way. And I can tell you, you could take that same recipe. That is incredible. Yeah. And uh, you can serve it with uh, cucumbers and cilantro. Yeah, and uh, some maybe uh, some pickles. And it is the favorite dish in, uh, in the south of Vietnam. Okay. That's it. Thank you for watching. Do you have any questions? I'm going to make a statement to you as it's going to be the favorite recipe on the south shore of Nova Scotia. Oh. when you get there <laughs> wonderful i will well, say jacqueline that i will say jacqueline that when i was there it is delicious and they're available on the street by the street venues it's you can buy them i have pictures of myself and my friends eating them on the side waiting while while our vehicle was being fixed it broke down but anyway make a long story short no matter where you went in the south you could always go to the street vendor and get a beautiful sandwich some of them have different flavorings it was so delicious but the baguettes were beautiful yeah. in vietnam yeah yeah well we can tell you this jacqueline we will be making that and i love the technique with steaming the meatballs do you know i can tell you i've made a lot of meatballs i have not used that technique before and I really like how you did that. And I love the creaminess when you put that into the sandwich. That is a really well explained, done every week. And we really, really do thank you for that. And I know Angela from, from Urban Joy was basically saying a little bit of the same thing that she had really enjoyed. So I'm gonna slip aside in here before we go over and talk to um, Richard in Ireland. So let's talk about some other sides that can go on any burgers. And, and one of the things that, and Jacqueline, you inspired me because, um, and the pickling of these different vegetables is something I did a little bit, but when my good friend Jacqueline came into my life, you can smile, mom and I are eating a lot more different type of vegetables. So thank you so much for that, Jacqueline. Um, so this is a beautiful bowl of pickled radish and carrots. 
And because it's in there a bit, it's really neat. You can see, see that it's getting pink at the bottom. So I can tell you it smells absolutely incredible. So what into this is really easy and it's one of those things you can really do anywhere. Um, but I'm gonna add this one up. So I have to put this down because they're, they're too big. So uh, radish and is a wonderful root vegetable, very common here. I think we often see them in and around this size. So that kind of makes sense that a little bit, kind of nice size, bit bigger than that, that had of garlic. But they all come in different shapes. They also come in different shapes, right? So look at this one. It is also a radish, but it kind of looks like a carrot, right? So it come, and this is where I was really surprised. So when we went to visit Angela yesterday, I almost need two hands. This radish is the one that she had given me. Can you see the size of this? It's bigger than a baseball. So we can give some references for everybody. Funny, I almost want to look it up next to my head. But you can see the shape. These are the same breed of radish. One just grew this way and the other one grew this way because I asked Angela about that. Because they come from what are called an heirloom carrot, sometimes when she grows a crop, she's not quite sure what the shape. So this one may look like a parsnip, but it actually is a white daikon radish. So any of you, Jacqueline, I think that that's a popular one in Vietnam. I'm doing a little research on that. So you start to see, and I'm trying to get all the colors here for you. Do you see what's happening here? And I planted four totally different varieties of these. They do taste a little different. So that is the one thing about these. Unlike that example of our beautiful carrots, the radish actually have a different flavor to them. So it's a really great piece. These are extremely plentiful in Atlantic Canada. I know Roz has got some, I gave her some seeds. If you planted them, mine are all up. They're all up about this high. So then obviously we will wait for fruit. I'm not sure. That's the biggest radish I've ever seen in my life. Just so everybody knows on this show, that is going to be a first, but I can tell you, they look beautiful together. I used all of them in here. And the only thing I used in here is I actually used a rice wine or a white, like a light wine vinegar, because I didn't want it to be overly bitter. And I do have a little vinegar jar here somewhere. And this was inspired, Rosalind. This is a little bit pink, if you can see it, because, and I see her smiling, this is made out of a chive blossom vinegar. It's a recipe she gave me many years ago. I have never stopped making it. My chives are starting to bloom out back, Roz. So as soon as the chive blooms, they get a purple flower on the top. That flower is edible. It is a beautiful flavor, beautiful to decorate your food with, but I will take all the tops off, put them in a giant jar of vinegar and sit for a couple of weeks and you just have chive blossom vinegar. So that's what I use in the pickled vegetables. So simply that, and I use some maple syrup. So you wanna use a little bit of a sweet in it. I prefer to use a honey or a maple syrup to using sugars. And that's what's in that. So because that's that for a few hours, I can tell you it's already very delicious. So that is great today. We're probably gonna use it as a little bit of a side salad with the burgers that we're having. It would also taste great on a veggie burger or the pork burger, but Jacqueline, that'd be a lovely accompaniment on top of that sandwich that you made as well to add some more of that extra crunch. Um, so one other side of onions before we roll over to Richard, I've made these in the past and again, one of my favorite toppings on a burger are some caramelized onions. So this time I made two versions. So I put a very large tray where I cook all the onions down. So when in the pan with strictly onions, with some olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. And in this particular one, I added some fresh thyme, which of course is always my favorite herb. So I let all of that cook down and that's what is in that bowl. So I get a little bit of the brown on it. In this bowl, we spiced these ones up. So we cook the same cooking technique, 
At the very end, I added a quarter cup of maple syrup and I added, let me get the right one, some of the gourmet buffalo sauce. So this is the dairy-free version that I used. And then when I left them in the frying pan, and I'm hoping that you can see this, can you see how it's dark? See those dark colors? And in those, I used about a quarter of a cup of that buffalo sauce. So these definitely have some spice in them. So they're definitely going to have a bit more of the spicy piece. But as I stirred it in the pan, I made sure that I kept it in the medium heat and kept browning a little bit. What that was doing was caramelizing and adding a lot more flavor to it. So it is one way to add flavor to your food without having to add more. And that's cooking things down a little bit longer and you get that light brown color and then you sort of flip it. I can tell you that these are some of my best. Very excited to put this on the burger because of course I was doing some quality control earlier. So I know Maureen, I think you get excited sometimes to realize how many vegetarian dishes that we do around here. So those are a couple of the burger toppings that I've made that can go on any one of the burgers that are being made. But before we come back around to Maureen and my burger, Richard, what do you have cooking for us in Ireland? Okay, my burger is um, actually inspired by the one burger that's the most memorable burger in my life. Does anybody have something like that that they, they could, yeah? Um, I'm going to need a screen share. Is that on? Okay. Okay. Do you see that burger there? Okay. Okay. Now the story behind this burger is, is quite interesting. I bought that burger in Spain. Okay. So that's, well, we're going to have an Irish burger today. It's actually inspired on a Spanish hamburger. And um, I was on the Camino going across the top of Spain and um, during the middle part, it's all flat and I needed to catch some time up. So I rented a bike and I did um, 240 kilometers in about four days. But on this particular day, this was lunch and it was actually Easter and I'd ridden 40 uh, kilometers that day and I bought this beautiful hamburger and you can see the ingredients on it. Now that's what I'm going to make here today. I'm going to try and replicate this. So there's if you look, you can see there's lettuce, of course, but there's actually ham. There's actually ham that you can see there. And right underneath, there's fried egg as well. And then we have over here tomato and some pickles and mustard and mayonnaise. And um, you would think, here's the, here's the weird part about it. it. It was a very memorable burger. And you would think that after riding 40 kilometers, you'd eat the whole thing. But that's as far as I could get. <laughs> I took three bites out of it and it wasn't because I didn't want it and it didn't taste good. It's because my body was actually regulating my diet, not my mind. And I knew I needed to go another 30 kilometers. So this is as far as I ate. So the rest of it became my Easter dinner that night. Well, tell this us what you put on that burger, Richard. We're anxious to hear what's going on in that duplicate when you redo it again. So this is what I've done here today. Now, I bought uh, two Irish beef burgers, as you can see here. And one of them's in the, the pan already. They come with these little cheese melts on top of them. So what I'm gonna do is, and I just wanna show you the size of the burger. You know, it's fairly big, it's fairly big, which is kind of almost too big. So what I did was I put one in there and then I cut it in half. So you can see it here. It's still, it's still a nice big burger, it's still cut in half. And what I'm going to do now is put the cheese melts on one of the halves. This is a little bit similar to what um, Roz was doing when she pushed those two things together. I was thinking of doing something like that, but, um, but we'll do it this way instead. So here's the ingredients all laid out here. We've got, I've got two types of buns here. They're small buns, as you can see. This one is seeded. And this is, uh, this is just another crusty kind of bun. And you can see the middle, I don't know, yeah, you can see this is all dug out here. This is all dug out. Now, normally I would put uh, maybe some lettuce and some mayo and stuff like that here, but I'm gonna turn it upside down and put the cheese part in there and then add the other ingredients, which we have here, the fried egg, you can see that. The, uh, the lettuce, this is oak leaf lettuce. 
a few cucumbers, which weren't on the original burger. I'm not even sure if there's going to be space for them. And some pickles are over here. Tell us you about your burger there. bun and why, Richard. Um, show us that view again and show that for the audience a little bit more about why you did that to your bun. Mm -hmm. There's the cheese melt and there's the half burger. So I'm gonna put this into the cutout part of the burger and smush it in there. And that's gonna taste, I'm sure that's gonna taste great. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add a little bit of a uh, little bit of fried egg there. And then there's there was ham on the other burger. So I bought some um, sourdough crumb ham. So this looks like good stuff. Nice and fresh. Oh, there we go. Now I'm hoping that this will look almost exactly like the original burger when it's done here. So mayonnaise, which I'm going to use yogurt mint mayonnaise on the top here. And some mustard. Looking pretty similar, looking pretty similar. So then on the bun side, a little bit of lettuce, some some pickles, and I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, yeah. So here, see if you can take a picture of this before I close it up. <laughs> Can't hear you, Michelle. I'm over here telling you I'm trying to get a picture, but I was throwing my burger on. It was too funny. You made the request for me to take a picture while I was in behind me throwing a burger in a frying pan. Okay. But I'm back. So show me that burger again. Here it is. Three thumbs up, Richard. Really, really. And I love the fried egg on there. And what an incredible addition. And that's a neat ingredient that you I see a lot of menus now I think Ross will be able to attest to that you see it a lot of different restaurants when you throw the fried egg on it so I love that ingredient so um what do you think you're going to have for the flavor there Richard um for the flavor well it's going to be a nice mix of the beef with the ham and the eggs and the lettuce and the pickles and the mustard and the mayonnaise and uh the tomatoes <laughs> which is more than enough I think So that's, um, that's it. So I've, I was, because I cut it in half, I have two burgers here. So this is my big lunch today. Possibly the other burger that's still in here will be my dinner, just like it was when I was on the Camino. <laughs> so tell us, Richard, as you show us that burger cut in half, what's your favorite side? Oh, probably, you know, traditionally, probably mustard. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's, that's a sauce, but the, the, my favorite sauce. side would be lettuce, I, I suppose, lettuce. What do you like to eat with your burger? Do you want fries? Do you like a salad? What do oh, you have with your burger? I don't like anything with my burger. I don't like fries, actually, really. Nothing wrong with that. You don't need to have any side if you put all the right stuff on top of your burger. Well, listen, no, Richard, I like to, we're going to go on the for the, the spirit. Superior, all right, the so Richard, we're going to go on to food, some more so of the next recipes. That. And go over and um, do a side here. We're gonna go over and see what your mom's burgers got going. So um, we're gonna say thank you. And that was absolutely beautiful. So we'll come back to you at the end. You can tell us how good it is because I'm sure you're gonna be wanting to enjoy that. I'm gonna take a bite of it. I'm gonna take a picture too. Okay, good, good luck step. mom. You have a bit of a story there with the, the poor man's yep. burger, right? There we go. Just a sec, Maureen. I'm gonna go in with a couple of things here. Um, we've got the beef burger on over here, so we're really excited. It smells delicious. We've used the cast iron frying pan. And she just flipped it, and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards, because honestly, the cast iron frying pan is that heavy. I can't pick it up to carry it over to show you. But one of the other things that we're going to be doing is fiddleheads. And while Maureen's showing you there, we're going to get these cooked up. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about fiddleheads. And um, 
So these are this beautiful little, and they're a fern that grows over by fresh water in and around Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. And I think a little bit into um, Quebec as well, but really, these are really regional to this area. They taste lovely. They've got a nice earthy taste. They, we cook them sometimes like you would a spinach and um, put a little bit of vinegar, salt and pepper, or maybe a tiny bit of butter and eat them just whole like that. They do need to be cooked. And as you see right now, these are all here in the bowl. What I'm gonna do with these lovely little ones, I'm gonna give you another good look at those, is I'm gonna put these in a frying pan and I'm gonna do them up with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of the Tex-Mex seasoning that I get from Angela. So because one of my burgers has got a little bit of zippy, I'm just gonna put a dash of this and I'm gonna crisp them up a bit different in the frying pan. So. I'm going to go get those in the frying pan so we can show you what this wonderful delicacy looks like and just a couple of different ways that we do it. So Maureen, tell us a little bit about your burger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Well, actually, I'm doing uh, um, a Welsh uh, recipe in a way. It's called, they're called Glamorgan sausages, or they can be Glamorgan patties or whatever. But there's, um, I, I, I guess in a way, what um, this is all about is the fact that um, way back in Wales in the 18th century, they were way ahead of us because they were already doing uh, veggie uh, um, foods. You know, veg if they, they had a shortage of meat, they would make up um, sausages. Well, they were called Glamorgan sausages <clears throat> or patties or whatever to, uh, you know, um, give them the taste that they were actually getting some meat. And it's really, I, I guess you could have called it um, the uh, poor man's... Uh, uh, sausage, but of course they didn't have hamburgers then. So um, basically, um, I think the first recorded Glamorgan sausages were in the 1850s, and there was um, there was a book written by uh, George Henry Borrow in which he he did a trip um, called Wild Wales, and he discovered that that the um, the local peoples were making these sausages, and uh, they were called Glamorgan sausages. And they're made from um, um, a Welsh cheese called Kerfilly cheese, which is, is, is a white kind of crumbly cheese. And it has a kind of slightly acidic taste, but it's a very, and, and it's a very kind of creamy at the same time. But unfortunately for me, I wasn't able to get that cheese. So you can substitute that uh, with um, basically a cheddar, you know, which, um, yeah, the cheddar cheese. And you can, you can use them. Um, if you could get any kind of crumbly cheese at all, that would be the best thing. But however, I wasn't able to do that. And the other thing that's a really important ingredient is the leeks. And again, um, I had problems yesterday trying to get the leeks. So I've just had to um, actually change that recipe and put in um, just my regular yellow onions, but that's fine. It works, it works out okay. But if you were to do a, the traditional Glamorgan sausages, try to get the to Philly cheese or some kind of crumbly white cheese and the, and the leeks, that would be the best um, part for the recipe. It's a very simple recipe. Um, it has only um, butter, um, leeks, um, chives, breadcrumbs, which of course you can use whichever bread that you um, prefer, whatever your favorite bread is. But I've just used the ordinary um, homemade bread. And you can put in sage, chives, thyme, or, you know, basically you can put in, I put in today, I've actually put in um, roasted onion and cumin. I put in Himalayan salt, and I put a bit of nutmeg in, and salt and pepper, and a tiny bit of um, basil um, olive oil. And then you have to put in a couple of eggs. The eggs are separated. You only, you only use the egg yolks for the actual mix, mixture. And you keep the whites, you whip those up and you actually dip your burgers in that before you put them into the pan and fry them. The onions have to be sauteed before you put them into the mixture. But it's a very, very simple recipe. And you can, of course, you know, top it up with whatever you like. Um, I've actually prepared, prepared one now. I'll just show you what the mixture looks like when you're preparing it. This is what it kind of should look like before you actually make your patties. 
And of course, like I say, um, you can top it up. I've, I've got some chow that I might top it up with. I'm not quite sure if I'm actually going to do that because um, this is the, the final, can you see the patties? I hope you can. That's the final yes. Welsh. Well, she delicious, on, Maureen. They look delicious. Very nice. It's on a homemade bun that I made for it. So uh, I, I don't even know if I actually want to put anything on it. Um, <laughs> In a way, I think I might not because I think it might interfere with the actual flavor, you know. But the, but it's a very simple recipe. You can look it up. It's called Glamorgan sausages, and it's so easy to make. And as I say, you can put you can change it about and, and add whatever spices you like and do a little bit of variations with the cheese. But Maureen, uh, it looked amazing, and I couldn't agree with you more. I don't know how much more I might put on that. You have such a what a maybe a piece of lettuce, you know, with just something to add a little bit of maybe crunch or texture difference. That's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, yes. So it is. Uh, uh, like I say, um, the the veggie kind of stuff um, was invented a long time ago, way back in the eighteen hundreds, and uh, <laughs> um, they, it's, it kind of revived itself again during the Second World War because of the shortage of meat. People then started making these Glamorgan sausages again. Well, thank you for sharing, Maureen. Make sure you take a picture of that. And we love your recipes and coming in from Liverpool, Nova Scotia. And hopefully you're going to have a beautiful day over there. So Sorry, we've got a few more recipes. We're going to wrap up here. And we're going to make sure that we get that recipe from Maureen. And we're going to share that out later words. Late, late, later words. There are now I'm making up words. Afterwards. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about my mom back here is like Chef Boyardee, which is a, a, a saying that you would hear here in North America a lot. Um, she is cooking and we've got a burger. It's been perfectly cooked. I'm gonna, first of all, we've got a perfectly grilled bun. So let's just show off the bun for a minute with a nice grill and a little bit of browning. And here's the perfectly cooked burger. Can you see all that? that often is what you get when you use a really good cast iron pan. If you're not gonna get those, and I have a big approval, which I was loving from Roz, to see more burgers cooked than most people have. But that is like that flat top feel. It's got a beautiful piece. If you just notice, I put a piece of lettuce under my burger. And I love a little visual that Jacqueline, when she was, we work on a lot of things during the week, she was looking at it and she had this great visual on the different layers of stacking a burger. Well, I'd like to say, I think I liken myself to be a bit of a burger aficionado. So that being said, I put the lettuce underneath there. Underneath the lettuce, I'd already put a little bit of this beautiful sauce that I'm gonna talk about making right here. So I already made some and it is an incredible tasty burger sauce and it was inspired through with some spices from Angela, from Urban Joy, and some of Scott's gourmet sauces. So to put it in to give it a little bit of a zest, and anybody who might have eaten at a McDonald's somewhere in the world, everybody's trying to figure out the Big Mac sauce or something in and around. It's got a little bit of that flair to it, let's say that. So that's underneath the lettuce on the bun. Then I've got that. The other thing I like with the lettuce on the bun that way, it holds the juice from the meat so your bun doesn't end up disintegrating while you're eating it. So it's a really good eating trick. So obviously one of the other things I'm gonna chop on my burger, I'm gonna put some bacon on there. And I know with my burger, I'm gonna put some of the spicy caramelized onions because I knew that that was kind of the one that I was angling for. So one of the other things that Angela had given, I'm gonna wrap up with a recipe here on two things. So I have this beautiful chutney and I'm gonna try it in the jar and we featured that before. So one of the things Angela said is, this will go really nice with the pork burger. So it's got a combination of peppers, celery, onions, and a lot of different things. It's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. So it's definitely, it smells amazing. There's some coriander and a lot of different spices. 
Angela is going to give us a recipe that we're going to post up on that. But that chutney would be a great topping to use on top of um, a pork burger or a different other one. That one's not going to go on my burger today because I use the onions. So going over to this other wonderful idea for a topping, this is a rhubarb relish. So we talk about relish. And, and I think I had heard someone else reference that some of the traditional toppings was a relish piece. I think raw is in there. So there's nothing saying the type of relish can't change, right? Just needs to have relish on there. I'm very excited to be trying to duplicate this recipe, but it is rhubarb and a radish chutney. So you can imagine, I can decide why Angela decided to make radish in something, because if she's cook growing them this big, she's got a few of them. So this is a beautiful chutney. I can't really, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see the color is this beautiful purple. And hopefully you can see a bit of the stewing where you see the rhubarb in there. So another, it's a little bit on a sweeter side, but not, you know, it's definitely a chutney and a great relish that you would be able to put on a burger as well. So one of the other things that Angela had done, and this is one of the things that we talk about preserving, pickling and things like that. So those beautiful dill pickles. So one of my next, two other toppings that's gonna to go on the Shell's burger, and I gotta make sure that that juice is going into the right spot, are these pickles that I have diced up because I like having a little bit of a thinly sliced pickle on my burger. And she did these wonderful pickled yellow peppers. So they're very soft and because they've been pickled and they've been in this, and these are beautiful to look at. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And the jar. So I'm going to put a little bit of these on mine because it's going to give the briny, pickly flavor to it. Because it's got the heavy beef burger, this will be a nice flavor profile on top. So I'm going to put a couple of those peppers on my burger. And this is one of those ones where I, we should have been hoping for a skinnier bun. But that's okay, we'll get it around. So one of the last things I'm gonna to top this off, because it has these wonderful ingredients, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that sauce on top of it. So let's talk about how to make this secret sauce. In this jar, you're gonna see, you can see in here, that's two diced dill pickles and mayonnaise. So the ratio I wanted to be able to show you, which is why I displayed it this way. So there's a really good amount of finely diced dill pickle. So you definitely want the dill pickle that's more on the sour side for this recipe, not sweet. So good. So that's mayonnaise. So whatever traditional mayonnaise or Richard, your, your famous yogurt mayonnaise that you're using. So then the other two seasonings that I'm gonna put into this is I'm gonna use some of the smoked paprika garlic salt. So if not, use a little bit of smoked paprika. So in a total, I put about a teaspoon of this combination. So we would have the smoked paprika, garlic with a dash of salt. So that's the only little bit of salt that's going into this. You really do get the brininess of the pickle and everything else that's in there. Now I'm gonna be our last friend. Here we go. So can you get dehydrated onion flakes? I think most places, it's a fairly common one that you can get. And that is just a, you know, it's an organic minced onion. So it's just a dehydrated onion flake. The thing that's really lovely about these is they have saltiness, but it's really not salt. When I'm using those in a dip, they're small, they look like a seed. So I'm gonna put a teaspoon of those into this dip. And what that does is it adds that extra oniony crunch, but you see, I'm not using real onion in there. So it's important, and you see that extra sauce, you see the onions. And then the last, and certainly not least, is about the same amount of mayonnaise I'm gonna put as, as I am with the buffalo sauce. So if you're gonna repeat this, you're gonna to wanna to repeat it, making sure that you've got, and I'll tell you, before you stir it, it's really pretty. So there's all the pieces of it together. And then I'll stir it up because I have it all ready to go that's what it ends up looking like. And you can see the nice consistency of it. So I'm gonna to top the top of my burger off with a little bit of that on my nice crispy bun. 
And then as, as we would sometimes we'll say, you could smear it on. There's a wonderful new word for everybody. And that's gonna be what's gonna top off my burger. Now, I could add a lot more, but I don't think I will fit it in my mouth. So that is Michelle's beef, spicy onion burger. So I hope you can see why that lettuce needs to be in there now because there's a lot of yummy, juicy things on there and I really want that bun to stay together. So I'll cut that in half in a minute and show everybody what it looks like. But right, we've got a couple of other things to wrap up. And uh, mom's pointing at her fiddleheads that are out nice and crispy and cooked. And I'm gonna put one in my mouth. I saw her taste testing them earlier. They're absolutely delicious. I put a tiny bit of that Tex-Mex seasoning on them and I fried them with a little bit of olive oil in a frying pan, just so that they're cooked through. A little bit of crispiness on them and it's just a nice side to have with a burger instead of a salad this time of year here in Atlantic Canada. Wouldn't be one that we would use commonly, but I would also consider putting that as a burger topping. So to Rosalind's point earlier, I might take those out tomorrow and end up on a burger topping on those as well. I think they might be really lovely on that veggie burger. So I'm gonna end on um, this lentil burger recipe. I've not put it together, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Put the picture of it. I've made these many times before, and it's a really, it's quite a simple recipe. Can you get the big knife for So in this bowl is cooked lentils. And I'm wondering if you can see down over here, all the cooked lentils are here. In the middle of that, I've got some dried onion flakes. And this is diced spinach diced baby spinach. And I wanna show you that because it's raw and I diced it up very fine. So in here is the cooked lentils and I'm gonna go over the, what I put into the lentil recipe. The spinach and that, and there was one egg. The other thing that I put in it is I put a little bit of a gluten-free quick oat. And the reason why I use that versus a breadcrumb is I don't eat wheat in that sense. So I have to eat a gluten-free. So these are a great alternative. And there I only put about a quarter of a cup of those because you don't need a lot. But the last ingredient in this burger that I really like, and I use the Tex-Mex seasoning within the lentils when I cook them. And then the only thing I cooked in the pot is I diced up a whole onion and sauteed that into the pan. Then I add and cook my lentils in and cook them all through together. And I do add seasoning in with the lentils. So again, I use Angela's Tex-Mex seasoning and I'm gonna look at the side of the jar. It's one, when you're looking, it's got a garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, black pepper, some chili powder, cumin, and red pepper flakes. The one thing that is unique that she has used in here, she used a lime flavored sea salt. So if you don't have that, hopefully you can find a lime. So here's a great sneaky way. This is a microplane, and I'm not sure if it's a kitchen tool everybody's familiar with. Please be careful, they're very sharp. <laughs> but the wonderful thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna zest a little bit of the lime into the bowl with the other ingredients. And then afterwards, we're gonna show you what those patty looks like and we'll post it on to Atlantic Canada Cooks. But I can tell you now that smells amazing. But that's really one of the sneaky ingredients that was into this. So because I'm gonna show you the consistency of the lentils. So the lentils end up coming out just like a burger meat would. So if you can see that, so we're gonna blend all that up and form that into a nice burger patty. In the event, it's still a bit moist and add a little bit more of the oats to it. They'll, they'll balance out the burger, but you won't lose your flavor. So um, the one thing I would say with this veggie burger that's different is I wouldn't use it on the barbecue unless I was using a barbecue gnat with it because the lentils and the consistency of the vegetable so it's really well done 
in, a, in an either a non-stick pan or a proper pan. So if not, because um, I'll find that these burgers won't necessarily do as well in the grill is the message that I'm making. But this is your Mexican lime lentil veggie burger. So I'm see Rod smiling. Yep, yeah, we will be making all three burgers will be here to choose because one of my favorite things to do and we call this as we wrap up, they're called sliders in Canada. So we often make little, whatever burger we made, we make them into a miniature style so you can taste multiple ones. So we'll look forward to sharing from our kitchen to yours, more recipes each and every week. And I hope everybody has enjoyed Burger Week. So um, not all your traditional burger toppings, but I'm Michelle Alfred, this is my mom, Helen. And we just want to say thank you to Roslyn, Jacqueline, Richard, and Maureen to be our guest cooks and for you to join us every week. And next week, we're going to learn about how a lot of this pickling and how all of those condiments are made and share some really fantastic rhubarb recipes and a few more things that are growing and cooking here in Atlantic Canada. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Have a good bye. weekend. Now what do we say? We're on the A team in Canada. <laughs> yeah, right, Ty. You get that with the E H. Oh, that's good. <laughs> bye, bye, Michelle. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Rosalind. Bye, Ty.